All righty. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okie dokie. We are going to wait until a few people. Well, I'm talking about we. I always speak like it's a multitude of people. I'm going to wait till a few of you guys get on. Um, before we get started, it starts at exactly 7 a.m. We are going to listen. Today's topic is so good. I don't roll some stuff down. Actually, I speak on this, so I use some of my notes. Um, <clears throat> that I actually speak on. And this is communication. Uh, so I'll touch bases on the basic communications and I'll touch bases on good morning, Deron. Good morning, all my lovely people that's tuning in. Hey, welcome to Be Inspired. Um, <clears throat> like I said before, I speak on this and it's actually, um, we'll just wait till seven o'clock. I got it one minute and then we'll go ahead. But this is really, really good. I think it's good. Um, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. If you see me looking in different directions, understand that I am recording on different devices, but I'm trying to make this thing happen, all right? All righty, so I need some thumbs up when it's seven o'clock, okay? And also, listen, if you guys can share this video, because this is good, this is about communication, and it's a spin on uh, PMS. So, We'll go ahead and handle all of that lovely stuff. Let me get myself situated. Y'all already know how I do. Hey, is it 7 o'clock yet? Good morning, Doug. All right, I got the likes. I love you guys. Hey, keep hitting those likes and all that good stuff. Good morning and happy Friday to you. Welcome to Be Inspired. That cracks me up. Already talking, but let me do the formal introduction. All right, so today we're going to talk about communications um communication there there's four ways to communicate in which we all know you have your written nonverbal verbal <clears throat> excuse me and your visual now for those of you who don't know the visual is i'm communicating you got it or that's a visual so that's how we're communicating so if you see someone without saying a word a smile that's communication, all right? So if you're questioning that, that's it right there. Anyway, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm sure you all are familiar with the um, the term, the PMS. PMS, premenstrual syndrome. That's what you're probably thinking. Now, here's the thing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about power, money, and sex that PMS. However, once you dissect it, you'll realize how they kind of coincide. So the actual definition, and I wanted to make sure I got it right, the actual def definition for premenstrual syndrome is defined as a condition that affects a woman's emotion, physical health, and behavior. Now, when we communicate, when you're dealing in power, money, and sex, they actually have that in common, right? PMS, power, money, and sex deals with the same thing. It can affect your emotions, not the, just the females, though. Your emotions, your physical health, and your behavior. Now, I did write down the definition of power. And I just want you guys to kind of know what um, power is. I'm sure you guys know, not the uh, movie power. But that's the, comp that's the capacity to change someone's behavior, okay? That's what that is. Now, if you're communicating with someone, especially as an adult, I'm gonna go that way, I'm gonna do things a little backwards, okay? When meeting new people as an adult, these are things that you need to pay attention to. Power, or either they're coming into your life for power, and this is as an adult, in the professional world, so let's be clear, okay? Because usually you have your friends, you, you got your friends by now. You have to look and say, why are they trying to communicate with me? And it's usually either three things. Now, if you wanna go back and forth, but I want you to think about it with me and debate on this, you can do that. You need to ask yourself, what are their motives? These are questions you need to ask. Are they coming into my life or interested in me to gain power because usually people are like oh okay well guess what um they're doing good and i'm going to go and try to befriend them or is it money like i can get a financial gain off of this person or being around this individual i can increase my pockets okay 
or is it sex? So then, you know, those are the questions that you have to ask. And the reason that I say ask those questions, you know, what is someone's motives? I don't want you to be on edge and be sitting there looking over your shoulder like, what are they trying to get and have yourself on edge? That's not what I'm saying. All I'm asking you to do is just pay attention. Watch that fast talker. Now, I got this from my mama. When, you, when you're dealing with somebody that's a fast talker, she said, listen slowly. And I actually do that. When somebody fast talking to you and they're trying to get their point across and blah, 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 especially like your salespeople, they do that a lot too. You fast talking me, that means there's something that you don't want me to catch on to. So when you, as long as you're fast talking, I'm slowly listening. What are you saying and what are you not saying? All right. So I wanted to put that out there. So that's what I need for you guys to do. When somebody's coming to you, especially in, as an adult, I need you to listen slowly. And if they're moving too fast and you're saying, hold on, and they cut you off, mm -mm. ding, let it come up. Boom, red, red light, red light flash. I need to hold, step back and, and explain it. You know what I'm saying? Rephrase the question and say, uh, can you explain that? Did I hear? And just rephrase the question, okay? Good morning, Lynette. Good morning, Vanetta. Good morning, all you lovely people that are joining in. So I wanted to put that out there. I'm going to um, give you some effective ways to communicate as an adult, okay? As a leader, because I know you all are leaders, but I don't want you to be tricked, okay? I don't want you to be tricked or misled. So that's why we talked about the PMS. Motives, motives, motives in everything. Now, Granted, you will meet some other people. And, and honestly, those people that came into your life probably for money, for uh, power, money, and sex, you, they could become great friends of yours. But just know, don't be off your game. You know what I'm saying? Don't be off your game. So anyway, ask the right questions. If they are not talking to you and they don't want to talk to you, good morning, Tiffany, and they don't want to answer your questions, ugh, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Because guess what? You're into it as well. Let's be real. You're into it for either one of three of those things, all right? So you want to um, to effectively communicate with that individual. <laughs> These are some things you want to do. Refrain from using negative comments. You know what I'm saying? And you know I always say that anyway. The metaphors. Refrain. You remember back in the day, what was it like second grade when you learned about uh, similes and metaphors? Refrain from using those. If you're trying to get your point across, you don't want to give a negative example, especially with the way the world is going right now. Um, you set team agreements. You set the agreement. If you got a fast talker in your life, uh-uh, you slowly listen. You set the agreements, okay? Because you are the asset. Always remember that. You are the asset. Don't let somebody else tell you that they are the asset. If they're, if they're in your space and you are allowing someone to have your time, you are the asset because guess what? If you weren't there, they wouldn't have anybody to listen, right? Right. No worries. I don't have an audience with me to say right, okay? Or a big sign to say, say right, people. Also, respond instead of reacting. Now, when you respond, you want to respond calmly. Don't react because remember, a way of communicating, visual. So if you're like, let me hold up, mm -mm. just sit back. Silence is something. And if somebody is talking constantly, boom, 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 and they won't let you get a word in edgewise, stop talking. And then they'll see. And your um, your um, nonverbal communication will show them that either you checked out and not paying them any attention or you're listening attentively. And usually when you have that fast talker and you're listening slowly, you're pretty much like, yeah, okay, I already have my answer. The answer is no. So you don't want to hear the rest of their spiel. Um, I told you, uh, that's be a good listener. So pay attention to what's not being said. I said that before. I'm going to say that again. Like, like I said, my mama said, if you're dealing with a fast talker, you better listen slowly. And I love that. Now, be, and this is funny, be pacific. The S is silent. I only did that for my sister because she be getting mad because nobody says specific right. They say Pacific. And I'm like, the S is silent, but the S, the S is silent. Anyway, be specific and clear 
in your answers and in your response so that there's no miscommunication at all or discrepancies in that, okay? Um, listen more than you speak. Now I'm looking down because I do not want to mess this up. Listen more than you speak, okay? That's something you do when you're when you are communicating within the professional realm, okay? And as a as an adult, listen more, speak less, so you can hear exactly what's being presented, and your you know your mind isn't cloudy, okay? I told you guys you are the asset. All right, let me see. Um, what else was there? Oh. And that's communicating as an adult. Real quick, I don't want to take much of your time. When you are communicating with teens, listen, when you're dealing with little girls uh, to my mothers out there or, you know, aunts who has have nieces and stuff like that, and you want to communicate with your teen and you don't understand what's going on and they be, they're becoming withdrawn with your little girls, the way that you communicate with them, because we are females and we're emotional, we like time. Good morning, Tish. We like time. So if you have a teenage daughter and she seems standoffish, set a date where you actually could spend time with her, okay? A movie is a bad thing because you want to communicate and see where their mind is at. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because the way the world is, and like I told you guys before, the issue is that they keep bringing up mental illness. Yes, mental illness, mental illness is real. However, there's a problem with coping. And if you don't know that there's an issue because you're not paying attention to your child, you end up with these results and we don't need these results anymore. Okay. You have people that are looking for attention. They don't know how to cope. They're upset. Their heart, you know, their heart is broken. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to take you out too. And then they reflect back to mental illness. I have to say this. And it, 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 like I said, this is dear to my heart. These young kids do not know how to cope. And you know why they don't know how to cope because they have everybody gets a trophy. They, they got that in place. If everybody didn't get a trophy, they would know how to cope as a young kid. But if you're giving, 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 and you're not letting them earn it, they're like, okay, well, everything is supposed to go my way. Now, when you're dealing with teen boys, how do I communicate with my teen son? Food. Take them to dinner. But they say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Listen, that is not a myth, even with the young kids, the young boys. Food. I'm talking teens. Not your elementary people, because they usually pretty much boisterous. But we keep telling, be quiet, stay in your place. This is a new breed, new generation, ladies and gentlemen. So we need to hear what our kids are actually saying and pay attention. We have to. Again, 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 I have to say. And I'm going to say something that's probably going to tick a lot of y'all off. But follow me. You have the no bullying policy, which is fine. Oh, good. Good, Tiffany. How you doing? Hey, my Aunt Juliana. Good morning to you in Columbia. Listen, the no bullying law. Let, let, let's be real. Okay. They have a no bullying policy in the schools. I learned how to cope. This is just my opinion. I'm not, no, I'm not saying that it's okay. It's not okay to physically abuse somebody. But as a child... I learned a lot of my coping skills from the bullies. And I'll explain, I'll share. You had that bully in the school that, okay, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. That let me, that prepared me for the real world. You have your bullies as a kid and you have your bullies as an adult. So when you sit there and you reflect, you know, as an adult, you look back, this situation is familiar to me. This is so-and-so back in school that I knew, guess what? And I don't curse like that. So I know I ain't effing with them. You know what I'm saying? I ain't messing with them. In the workplace, like I said, PMS, why are you here? I pay attention to that because of that bully back in school. I know they meant me no good. So guess what? As an adult, I'm going to watch out for you. Now, I want you to think back even on the playground. The playground back then, they had uh, metal miracle rounds. They had the metal sliding boards that was like a thousand feet high. Okay. We had that. We had the teeter tots. Remember those? Them cherry bumps and all that other stuff. Here's the deal. Good morning, Fahim. Good morning, Denise. Here's the deal. On the playground, I'm on the merry-go-round. Boom, boom, boom. Here come the bad kids. Guess what I knew? 
either, male, either you're going to get off because you know when they come on this miracle round, they're going to keep spinning and spinning and you're going to want to get off. And then you got to make a life decision at that age. Do I jump off or do I ride it out? Me, I see you coming. Man, let me go ahead and jump off this thing. Let's talk about the large sliding board. You know you went up a thousand steps. Is that a good idea? Because there is a possibility that I might fall. And the size wasn't big enough. And I was a little kid. Never went on that. The cherry bumps with the teeter tots. Boom, boom. Yes, it caused issues, concussions, and all that other stuff. But I learned life lessons. And I learned how to cope as a kid. You know what I'm saying? So you knew whoever your partner was, do you vibe or not? So as an adult, know who your partner is. Can I trust this person or not? And on that teeter-tot, the, the whatever it's called, on that, whoever your partner was, you'd be like, okay, are they going to jump off and give me a cherry bump? Same thing in life as an adult. If you're going to go into business with somebody, just think of that little teeter-tot thingy and say, hey, Mm, can I trust this person? Because remember, that's the only time you had a partner. You'd be like, you ain't going to jump off, are you? And then guess what? As soon as they jump off, you learned your lesson. You learned a life lesson. I ain't fooling with them no more. Okay? One time. All you got is one time to jump off this mug, and then I go up and bam. I ain't fooling with you no more. I'm telling you. And now what they have with the kids, they got them bubble wrap with all this plastic. So guess what? They're not, I mean, I don't want to say injure the kid or anything like that. But we learned from that stuff. And now everything is so protected that these kids cannot, the seesaw, thank you. Talk about the teeter-totter. Thank you, Aunt Julianne, the seesaw. And it's like, now everything is so, you know, these kids are bubble wrap. No, we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to take this metal off the playground because guess what? These kids are getting hurt. Guess, don't play on them. You have a choice. You have a choice as a child. Don't play on them. But like I said, you learn life. We had the opportunity to learn life's lessons as a little kid. There's a book out called um, Everything I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. I kind of vibed with that thing. You know what I'm saying? I got that. But we bubble wrap these kids and we protect them because we don't want them to go through what we went through. Like I said, I'm not down for the physical abuse. I'm not down for the physical abuse. However, you have to learn. And if we're protecting them so much as a little kid, they don't know how to cope as an adult. And that's why we have all these school shootings out here. Uh, like that serial bomber. They tell us, oh, he has mental illness problems. Let's keep it 100. If we all get stressed, we all got mental illness problems, okay? It depends on how you deal with stress. That's it. It's the coping. It's the coping that's the issue, okay? So we have to teach our kids how to cope. Now, usually in our culture, and I'm running over the time, in our culture, if the way that we roll, you know, was raised up, if you can handle at home and the way you was, you were talked to at home and with your family, I ain't gonna say my mother was talking to me all crazy because she wasn't. But if you can deal with the ridicule and I guess the bullying back then, we used to call it cracking with your family, man, the world, psh, that was nothing. That was nothing. Now they're like, no, be nice to them. No, and <laughs> play nice. Don't take their ball. Don't listen. If you want the ball, it's like play, share your ball. If you want the ball, you got to take the bull by the horns. And this is as an adult. You want to be an entrepreneur? Guess what? Boom. That's my ball. I'm not mad at that person because that's a go-getter. Now, if you want to be timid, you can't be like that in the workforce. And everybody knows it. You want to be timid and say, oh, they took my ball. And then you want to go and cry. Listen, I'm telling you, we learned some coping skills growing up real without being coddled and bubble wrapped like these kids are right now. You go home, talk about somebody took your bomb. What did your cousin say, your mother, your father? You better go get it. That's real life, people. That's why I said some of y'all are probably going to be mad at me because of how I feel. And the real truth of the matter of how we made it through. We, we are bubble wrapping these kids. Talk to these kids and be real. Everybody don't get a trophy. I'm keeping it 100. Everybody does it. You don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. The person that gets the trophy is the one that was, that's the standout. So if you want to be outstanding, I'm going to need for you to stand out. Research. 
do what you have to do to stand out, okay? So again, thank you for your time. I'm gonna run through this real quick. And actually it's just the PMS. Just like I said, premenstrual syndrome PMS for the females. We know that it affects our emotions, our behavior and our physical health. Guess what? In life, same thing. Why are people entering into your life? PMS, either power, money or sex. So I need you guys to wonder, what are the motives? Ask those questions you need to ask. Be successful. Do what you have to do. Be cautious and understand that you are the asset. I don't care what, the, what anyone says. Any deal that you make, any agreement that you make, understand when you are there, when you are there and you are giving of your time, you are the asset. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Because if they tell you differently and want to sugarcoat some stuff or bubble wrap you and say everybody gets a trophy and we're all just whoop, wake up, ladies and gentlemen, wake up. Anyway, that's my time. I thoroughly enjoyed you. Share this video if somebody, um, you think somebody can kind of learn from it or need to hear it or feeling down on themselves and not and want to start a business, but they were bubble wrapped. And their mother said, oh, we'll just get you another ball. Man, please, you took my ball, I'm going to get my ball, all right? And do you and be great and know that you can definitely succeed, all right? But you have to want to do it. Don't look for the other people. Remember the seesaw analogy I gave you? Who you doing business with? Can you trust them? Are they going to jump off and give you a cherry bill or whatever it is? Mm-mm. So, like I said, that's my time. I was closing up before. Thank you guys for tuning in. I truly appreciate you. You have no idea. Um, like I said, I do, I do speak. And I speak on different things. Inspiring, motivating others. Encouragement. That's, a, that's what, sh what Shop Talk with Mail's platform is about. Encouragement, inspiration, and motivation for you. Get up, get out, and get some. Make sure it's positive, all right? Pray for our country. You can uh, shop talk with mail, visit the website. Um, keep inboxing me if you have any questions and you have a topic that you want me to discuss. I truly appreciate all of it, okay? Find you, embrace you, most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people, be inspired right here every Friday at 7 a.m. And listen, uh, sus subscribe to my YouTube channel. So if you missed this, you can actually see it on the YouTube channel as well. And you know, if you want to book me, y'all know how to get in contact with me. Shop talk with mail at yahoo.com. All right. And tune in um, tomorrow, blogtalkradio.com backslash shop talk with mail from 10 to 12. But we do the doggone thing. And guess what? You can talk about whatever you want to talk about because that's what we do. We talk from Yale to jail and from the church house to the pimp house. Nothing's excluded on shop talk. So if you don't have a phone, I suggest you borrow one. Call in and shop talk live, 657-383-1411. Deuces.